This episode brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block. Now you know what it is. Imagine, say if um, say if you're trapped in a wishing well, you know, but you but there's no wishes in it because something happened the with the way it was built and they had asbestos and they couldn't put any wishes in there, and um and see, and you can have one person throw something down that wishing well and you can catch it in your mouth. Guess what that's going to be? I'll tell you what it's going to be. Gray Block Pizza, 1811 Pico Boulevard in Los Angeles on the way to the beach. Gray Block, get that hitter. I want to let you guys know that I uh, will be coming June 15th and 16th to Yuck Yucks in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. June 23rd, Timbler Brewing Company, Bakersfield. They added an extra show. June 29th, Paramount Theater, Stark County, Wyoming, Illinois. And uh, July 6th through 8th, Levity Live in Oxnard, California. July 20th through 22nd, Charlie Goodnights, Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, and other dates, will uh, they're all on the website, theovon.com slash tour. I want to tell you about a new company called Spectre. Spectre, a binary options trading platform that takes the middleman out of trading. Okay, it's all crypto based. So transactions happen on the blockchain, man. Where you at them on the blockchain, right? Meaning there is no broker that could potentially uh, interfere or rip you off or mess things up or, or wear a pesky suit that you don't like in bad cologne. Those days are over. Try the demo today at the link below and in the episode notes. It comes with $60,000 in cryptocurrency for you to play with. You want to trade US dollars for Japanese yen? Click the Spectre link. If you want to trade British pounds for euros, uh, click the Spectre link. If you want to trade cryptos or just learn about cryptocurrency uh, or about trading in general, you can click the Spectre link. Try the demo at the Spectre link below and in the episode notes. And within minutes, you'll feel like a Wall Street trader with all the tools that the big dogs use. Once you get the hang of it, sign up for a verified account and start making real trades with real money. Sorry, America. Real trades are for outside the United States only, and they will check where you are from. Okay? So click the Spectre link. Get involved. Know what's going on. Crypto is the, is the, is the new thing. Okay? Get up on the blockchain. I'll see you baby girls on the blockchain. So try the demo, play with the simulated 60,000, see if you have what it takes at the Spectre link below and in the episode notes. Do you have a cold sore or do you have herpes? Herps, herpes, herpes. Uh, sorry, sounds like a Greek god, doesn't he? Greek god of people's crotches. Uh, herpes is a, um, I don't want to say it's the funnest disease you can have, but it's definitely kind of a party goers, you know, uh, you know, it's like body pimples kind of, but anyhow, um, you can move your, now, if you do have herpes, you can use your mobile device to get a prescription medication right now. That's right. Go to herpalert.com, www.herpalert.com, H-E-R-P-A-L-E-R-T.com. You complete a questionnaire, upload a few JPEGs and make a one-time payment. A doctor will review your case, a real doctor. Not some, you know, not some freak or pervo, a real doctor. We'll review your case and a prescription will be transmitted to your pharmacy. Oh, they had to use the word trans transmitted here? Whatever. Anyhow, usually within just 60 minutes. So look, if you have herpes, herpes, then 60 minutes from now, you can not, uh, you can have a prescription on your way and be ready to get in healed. Time is of the essence, so get diagnosis and treatment of your cold sores or herpes right now. www.herpalert.com. Private, convenient, fast, secure. Herp Alert. And now let's get to our episode. Today, I got a madness in here. Um, here, let me, some of you or listeners who have been here since day one will uh, recognize this song. Yeah. Yeah. This thing will make you want to play your leg, boy.
This one, huh? Set me free. Mm-mm-mm. Just don't say goodbye. Yeah. It's you and me. Enjoy the destination. Nation, nation, nation. Fantasy. Fantasy, baby. Painted on the wall. It's never too late. To come over Time slips away From you and me now So don't hesitate Alright, 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 alright Guys, that song is uh, it was uh, given to us uh, in the beginning of this podcast to use by a man, a magical element of the universe. I mean, just like, I mean, in a, in a special type of human, almost like a, you know, a, you know, as if like the, as if you know, they had some dark arts, but the Lord gift wrapped them. You know, it's almost like the devil and the Lord just cleared their throat at the same time and just spit something right here into our studio. And this beautiful creature is here today, and that is Mister Stevie Starlight. Take my time. Come along. Awesome, man, Stevie Starlight. What's up, bud? Good to have you, man. Thank you. Yeah, nice to see you today. Yeah, Dude, thanks so much for coming in and joining pleasure, us. My pleasure. Um, we just kind of like, I, I don't want to say we pirated your song. No, it's good. I, I kind of wanted to- You move that closer to you? Sorry, I wanted but. to donate it to you guys and dedicate it as, as a uh, gift for uh, what you do for all your fans, you know? Oh, right on, man. Yeah. Well, we Yeah, I mean, we definitely love it. Like, I feel like, well, why don't you tell me, like, how did the song come about for you? Well, you know, it just kind of just came to me. I don't, I don't mean to just like short change it like that. It just really came in a matter of five minutes. Wow. And usually my best songs come that way. Yeah? Yeah, like the ones I work on for a while, people are like, all right, they don't really feel that, you know? Yeah. But stuff what do you I, think it is about that? You know what? It's just a gift from God when it comes like that, man. It's yeah. Really the, the music gods. When they give it to you like that, you just got to take it and just run with it. Do you find that there's a certain time of the day or year or anything like that? And there's a water for you right there if you Thank want you. it. Thank Do you. you find that there's a certain time of day or, year or that that you feel those like compulsions or those? You know what? There's no time and no 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 exact time because it comes at random hours. It'll be four in the morning. I'm sitting in bed. I'm like, I hear a little something in my head. I go, I got to get up and go put that down because if I don't, it just goes into the ether, gone. And then I'm like, damn, what could have that? What could that have been? You know? Wow. You know, and when I when I do force myself to do it, and, and sometimes it is forcing yourself to do it because it's like you got to work it. Yeah. And you do it, and then it's like, wow, I'm really glad I did that. Yeah. But for that particular song, I remember I remember just sitting. Um, it happened like boom. Like I had this that this little riff, mm-hmm. and then the, the lyrics just came out. A man could be higher than a mountain. So it just really just came out, you know. And I wrote it all down on paper within thirty minutes, and the song was done. Yeah, yeah it's a hit, man. Yeah, thank you, bro. And so, whenever, like, how did you get into the tunes, man? How did you get into tuning? Uh, my stepdad played a lot of music growing up. You know, twelve, thirteen. I was breaking the strings. He'd be coming in, whooping me. Yeah, was he a decent man? He was. You know what? I didn't understand at the time. He was very strict, very disciplined, disciplined, you know, to the max, you know? Yeah. Scary. Wow, Plus yeah. Plus he was Guatemalan, and that didn't like help that, you know? Yeah, like, Guatemalan, accent, like, dude. It's a fruit, too, if you have a lisp, yeah, you know? Yeah, <laughs> Guatemalan, right? Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, you know, it was like, he was very musical, though, so I'm very thankful for that. You know, He had keyboards all around. I was I was always just trying to pick up what I could, you know? So that's really how you got into into music. Yeah. You just had, it was basically because of a step, because yeah. your step that had these elements around. Totally. Very much so. You know, he was there, and uh, he, he would lock them all up in a room, and I'd sneak, sneak out, and, I, and I'd go into the room, and I'd have to lock that door up, you know? But I eventually figured out a little trick. I'd put a belt on a coat hanger, uh-huh. and, I, and I'd latch it under the lo- under, underneath the door uh-huh. and, and get it just right where I'd hear it, and I'd pull it down, and the door would lock, and I'd be out the other side. Wow. And he figured out my trick later on, you know? He, was, he wanted to whoop me, but he's like, it's pretty smart that you figured that out. <laughs> so he had to respect it a little, Kinda, huh? Kind of, you know? With music, like, what's your journey been like with music? Like, did you start here in Los Angeles? Did you come here to mm. Los Angeles? Like, 
See, my real dad was like a playboy. He was out here working for Orion Pictures, doing the whole thing, you know, mm -hmm. single bachelor man. Mm -hmm. And I and I come out here on the on the Christmas uh, vacations in summer, and I and I love the air out here. I felt something was different about this place, you know. Ah. And I want to be out here. And he'd be like, "Hey, what's your stepdad doing? Is he still whooping you? I'll come there and whoop him." Like he would be like that. And he actually flew to Texas one time. Really? He was pulling your ear. He goes, "Step outside, Steve." And all I hear is like a cartoon. Bring, bah, 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 bah. And he walked out. He goes, "Come on, let's go to the." park steve i realized that's italian Cra yeah. crazy dude man so you had the italians and the guatemalans <laughs> yeah, going at totally, it man. wow totally. man your mom likes to fuck abroad huh yeah and they both have like the same birthday no november yeah both hardcore scorpios Dang. crazy right so what does that tell you about your mom like when you look at her partners like what is that my did mom's you... a crazy fire too she's an aries and wow. she's just like i don't know if that's fire but she's very um She's like her mom a lot. She's Aries, same same kind of vibe. I feel it. You yeah, know? it's like you know, it's a certain certain energy, you know. But they want to be left alone, but they also want to do a lot on their own. They're, they got a young mind, but they're also very very smart about things. It's like it's interesting. But I love my mom. I talk to her, you know. When, yeah, I don't call her all the time, but I, I wish I would. You know, yeah. I don't call anybody all the time. I find I spend a lot of time with myself. Huh? Solitude. And so when you got out here, um, so your your father, your real father was living out here. Yeah. So you came to visit him. I did. And then at what point did you kind of make that move, that full move out when here? When I was 17, I got kicked out of my place in, uh, in, in Texas. Go so then you out. had to come out here. Yeah. So my dad goes, all right, you come with me. And I spent a week on my dad's couch and he booted me. Kicked me out there too. For what? Because I rode my bike and I, and I snuck out of the house and he's like, he's like, you want to go out with them? You want to go outside? Go out with them now. And he like took my bike, brought it downstairs. He goes, now you go with them. Wow. And, and, I, and I had nowhere to go. And I was like, calling him, Dad, please, can I come home? He's like, and, and a week into it, no. But he's like, a week later, he's like, all right, come on, Steve. Wow, a week he made you stay out. Yeah. <clears throat> a week I was out there, bro. And I was running with these freaks, belly dancers in Venice, going nuts on rooftops. I'm like, I love this. People playing bongos, going, paka, paka, paka. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> so, well, but like two days later, you start getting hungry, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you wonder where am I going to go? Where am I going to sleep tonight? <laughs> that roof is kind of getting a little weird, you know? Yeah, so then yeah. you so then you had to get back home. Yeah, man, you know? And then when did the, so, so now you had these musical elements, you're living with your dad out here, yeah. and then what happens? You know, I just I found that if this is what I want to really do, I got to put my best foot forward and really just stay on the grind and just like, you know, take it seriously. And did that happen or did it, it did. not happen? Well, I've been, I took it seriously. I've got my music in a lot of movies and stuff and I've, I've made money on my, my music. I still do. That's what, how I make my money. Mm -hmm. That's how I support myself. And um, so I buckled down somewhat to, um, to at least get that into a position where I can, you know, sustain some life energy out of it. You know? Yeah. And whenever, like, so, but take me in, so when did Stevie Starlight start? That happened when I had a, uh, my real last name is Natalie, you mm -hmm. know, like my dad, it's, it's his last name, and he's Christmas, they call me Stevie Christmas, but that's in the past. Um, and my, my grandfather's name was Nick, so he was St. Nick Natalie, uh -huh. Christmas, <laughs> how wow. about that, right? So, um, yeah, so basically, um, I was in this band called the Stevie Natalie Band, and uh -huh. this is when all that Iraq war was going on, and people thought I was Stevie and the Tally Band, and that had to change oh. real quick. So, my drummer, I broke down on my car, I had this 57 Mercedes Benz, right, mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm driving my car, I had no headlights, no dome lights, no rear lights, no brake lights, no nothing. I love the fuse that. fuse went out. That's and, the dark arts on wheels, <laughs> I'm like, bro. I'm like, I'm going to make it home. This guy, Jimmy, he's a beautiful guy. I still talk to him this day. Long hair, Italian dude. Well, glass blower has a shop right up the street. <laughs> I, uh, he goes, he goes, you make it home. He's like, dude, you're like Stevie Starlight. And he put that name on me. It created a monster. And I turned the, everything into Stevie Starlight. Yeah, <laughs> much and so, to his dismay at the time because he didn't really like that, but he just supports whatever I do. He's a good guy. So, so at that point, so Stevie Starlight was born, born that day, that night. And did you take it on as like an like a persona, or yeah. was, it, was it just a stage thing? You know what? It's that's a good question. I um I took it on because um I I I felt I can do more and and not um and step out of my box because you have some other name, some yeah. other kind of to run with. Yeah, you're someone new. Yeah, and, and now I'm getting to a point where like, I wanna maybe trans, transmogrify into another element, you know? Like? Maybe just my, who I really am, Stevie Natale. Oh. Uh, you know? So you, you might back out of the starlight. Mm. I might be a little, you know, a little too tutti fruity for some people, but <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, you know, don't leave me hanging on cam. No, I won't. I'm sorry, I didn't see you, No, it's man. okay. I never would. Oh, Here, I know you wouldn't. Bring it back. You're beautiful. There we go. Yeah. Um, so I wanna know, like, like with music, because now was it a, 
did you feel, because a lot of people move to Los Angeles and music is like their dream, right? right? Or music is, they have this goal that they have to achieve. And if they don't get there and, um, you know, and they really equate a lot of who they are to, I think, levels of success. Mm. Um, how, how has that honestly looked for you like in your life? Well, you know what? That's a good question too. And I, I, I think about that a lot. But I don't. I'm not. I'm not too hard on myself. I don't beat myself up on it because I know I have a certain path, and that's ultimately going to take place. And whatever happens in that time is good. And and, and this is the way that God wants me to do this. And I'm going to do it. Yeah. And, and I don't beat myself up too much. Now, good for you, man. That's nice. That's a nice gift to have. Is to not beat I, yourself up about. I do stuff. though sometimes because you know I can be my own worst critic as well. And, and I might not crack that whip like on an eight to five on myself because I'll be up at five in the morning making music and I'll still do it. Right. But um, I sometimes I wish I did have that. A little bit more of that other side that keeps yeah. you more in tune. Yeah, a little bit sometimes. Yeah. So it's a give and take, you know? Right, it is a give and take. Mm -hmm. It's such a give and take, man, because it's like... You know, um, we we're just talking a little bit ago about having to do, you know, podcasting. It kind of takes away from being able to do stand up comedy mm -hmm. sometimes. It's like, it's, uh, you know, it it's still awesome and it's still a mm -hmm. neat thing to do. And it's like a fun way to communicate with people. But, yeah. you know, it'll come like, you know, I'll have some sets in the evening and then I'll be finally be sitting down at like, you know, 8 30 mm -hmm. uh, to start thinking about jokes and, mm -hmm. and ironing that out. And so it's, it's really tough, and it's tough when you're a creative type of person, um, which I'm not ordaining myself a creative type of person, but, I mean, I couldn't run a fucking, <laughs> you know, like, there's a million things I couldn't do, but I can sit I can sit in a chair and think up ideas. Good, yeah, um, you can. But when you're a creative type of person, it's tough to have that other side. I know. It's you tough to also be your own them. boss. Yeah. It's like, I'm my own boss, and I'm also yeah. the worst employee. Yeah, but he helps you out on some stuff, right? Around yeah, you yeah, know. Chris definitely helps out. I mean, I have a yeah. big help from Chris and Nick. That helps Nick a lot. Nick, too. Nick's nice. Yeah, Just Nick's- him. He's a cool guy. Yeah, he's a, su he's a super guy. He was a premature baby, but was he's- he? um, Yeah, he was. Yeah, it couldn't tell at you, all. Yeah, if you get to know him a little oh, really? bit, he comes <laughs> in just about a month shy <laughs> you're funny but uh he's like an eighth month you know he's like uh -huh. an eight month old forever okay. but a beautiful young man yeah um but yeah so how so were there parts so you didn't really attach your you didn't attach kind of like material success or hollywood success basically, to your happiness no no basically i knew i was gonna make it so it didn't matter right and maybe that's gonna be when i'm 50 but i know that it's all you go what you go through the journey like i flipped the script on that one when i said enjoy the destination because mm -hmm. we're already there ah. you know what i mean you're already there enjoy now right you know enjoy the destination because you know people say enjoy the journey you do this is the journey the destination you're already here right you're already at your destination it's right now it's right now you know it's just like an idea yeah, it's almost like a just a way of reframing so like you the present. So when you breathe and just wake up and be thankful for your breath and just whatever happens throughout the day, you know, you're going to be happy for it. Yeah. You know, you're alive, you know, that's great. Man, it's amazing to stay in that place of gratitude. Um, yeah. You know, I'm thinking as you say, like, you know, the journey and the destination, I, I'll, I'll start to realize a little bit like as, you know, as little things will happen as I go along in life, maybe I'll you know, get to work on stage with somebody that I really admire or mm -hmm. like somebody that was like a, a hero of mine growing up as a comedian. I'll hear them at like a show of mine, maybe in mm -hmm. the back, I can have a distinct laugh. Yeah. This is like four years ago, they had this guy named Damon Wayans who used For to sure. be on In Living Color. Yeah, I'm very familiar with him. Yeah, and he, I heard him in the back, he was in the back mm -hmm. of one, at a show I was at, he was performing next, but I heard him laugh. Wow. Because he has a very distinct laugh sure. and I was like, Wow. Wow. I was like, that's crazy. You're on stage thinking and hearing that, and the, it's the only laugh I could hear. It just oh. suddenly just rung out, just like a like a little Christmas Good bell, for you, man. And then, so you have little moments that kind of like excite yeah. you and, and keep they'll boost you, fired you for up. a few months, maybe yes. you know, uh, sustain you. Yeah, you're on your own again, man. You got to figure this out, man. But then you're back to just yeah, you're back on your own. But I'm starting to realize that it's the parts in between those mm. where you're battling it out or you were staying with the path, and time. that's. A lot of that, those are really the funnest parts. Mm. Those are really the most, it's the challenge. It yeah, is, it's the challenge for sure. Yeah, it's, it's the, it is that journey that is the, that's the, that's where you learn about yourself. Yeah. You don't really learn true. about yourself in the moments that are like, oh, when you're on stage playing, that's not when you learn about yourself. Like you don't learn when you're talking so much. You just, you know, you're learning when you're listening, you know, in yeah. life. So those moments when you're, looking for things and you're listening, you're, you're peeping out things, you're like trying to 
attain some inspiration. Yeah. That's when you're learning. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's so funny. When, I don't even know what I'm saying. You I know. know. I believe you though. It's like say I'm you're driving somewhere, <clears throat> like you, you. But you don't learn when you're on stage when you're playing the music mm. as much. Yeah, yeah you learn nice. when you're off stage, and then it comes out. I go into another element sometimes when I'm. I don't even know I'm there, and I'll, I'll just transcend into a thing where I can just feel free. And I'm not even trying to do that. That's not what I'm like. I'm, sometimes I'll be very focused and, and, and understand what's going on at the moment. But when I find like I'm going to a solo or something, I just let loose, you know. Wow. And I don't. I can't. Couldn't even tell you what I'm thinking then, man. I really. Really couldn't. Dang. You know, they put my stuff onto a brainwave and, and, and ask, "What are you thinking right now?" I don't know what they would find in that thing. <laughs> really. And so, if you uh, <clears throat> your whole time here in LA, have you lived in Venice? Have you lived? I've gone all around, man. I've been through Eagle Rock, East LA, down to Malibu. I've been in Venice most of the time. Yeah. Santa Monica, of course. Um, Venice has changed, huh? Big time. Big time. What's happening in Venice, man? Well, you know, just uh, I'm looking at this nice painting here of Venice. I know the guy that actually painted the whole of that building right there behind that Mercedes. The whole, all that stuff. He's an amazing mural artist. Oh yeah, is that where that? Uh... That's where the bar is right there, Danny's. Mm -hmm. And across the street is Larry's. But um, man, Venice has changed. You know, a lot of the good people are still there. All the OGs are there. All the Venice uh, crew is there that I know. Yeah. I still go back there all the time and say what's up. Yeah. A lot of good people love me still there, and I love them. Yeah. But um, just as far as the dynamic of all the, the you know, stores moving in there and, you know, Snapchat fancy. and all that stuff, people got a little perturbed with that. Mm -hmm. I guess they, they they bailed out of there. Google's there, Snapchat, Vice, a bunch of stuff are over there. They just feel, you know, impeded on because that's just, you know, it's a really hardcore town. Venice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, well, I'm fascinated by it because <laughs> I just know it from like an outsider's perspective. Right. So, but yeah, I mean, it has this, it has this, it's like where the, where salt water kind of met grunge a little bit or met, I don't know. True. You tell me about no. it. Well, well, I got my what first. What was it like and what is it like? When I was five years old, my dad was living out there mm -hmm. and I went there, I was at the beach, I felt something in the air. And uh, ever since then, that, that feeling has never left me. It's always the same when I go back there. If I go there today, I'll feel that same feeling like mm. when I was five. You were just talking about this the other day. Smells and certain things can bring you back to something. Yeah. And um, man, just right right when I go there, I, I feel it. And I'm sure people do wherever they're from. They can go back to that place and feel that feeling. That's really beautiful. But um, Venice is a special place. You yeah. Know, it'll always be. And times will change and people will come and go. But that um, energy will always be there. Yeah. I think. Do you feel like, I mean... I mean, you know, a lot of times I notice that things get changed by, you know, when money moves in, mm. you know, when money moves in or when things become, it's crazy. It's like when we start to put, I don't know if it's appreciation on something or value on something or mm. when something's cool, it's hard to keep it cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, talking about things moving in like that. And I did some reading on some things and that's actually like a good thing because you know young money comes in and old money moves out it's just like it's a way of of recycling things you know mm -hmm. and that's that's that needs to happen actually in life that's it's going to happen no matter what they, they care about it anyways but some people get a little you know attached they feel like it's their home or whatever mm. but you know what it's, sometimes it's, it's the way it is man it has to happen that way that's interesting yeah it's like a, a lot of that maybe then is just about attachment mm -hmm. it's like we get attached to you know, to the way a street exactly. was, yeah. or to a family that, you know, or to what the what we like to see when mm -hmm. we look outdoors, we like to see that, and then we get attached to it, and mm -hmm. when that changes, that kind of scares us. Yeah, for sure. It's interesting how, you know, Venice is such a, it's such a, I don't want to say it's like a, there's, it's almost like this bottleneck of like mm. art and dreams and, yes. and, uh, I still see some of those people out there like living on the beach, you know? Yeah. They're just out there on those little um, bungalows, or not bungalows, but uh, those things, cabana, cabana type things that are called all along the beach. Um, not bungalows. Are they uh, campers? No, they're not campers. They're just like those little um, bodega, no, not bagodas. Bodegas? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I'm losing my mind right now. What are bagodas? I don't <laughs> know. Begonias are flowers. <laughs> Begonias. You know what I'm talking about? Pado Bodegas? Pagoda? No, like those things where they all hang out. And, and there's this little... Um, a bodega, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could like that. Be. They're I all think... still there, man. They're just drinking in the day, and they're just like getting by. But I'm like, wow, what do you, what do you want to do? You know, is yeah. this what you want to do? Maybe this is what they want to do. Yeah. Maybe this is what they're into. 
Um, what's it li- like? Do you feel like so a place like Venice, like and, and like you, you know, you say it's still the same sum, mm-hmm. you know, but other people have moved in and things mm-hmm. have to change, and that's the way it goes. So, do you feel like that? A lot of people, we want to be so free, but then yet we get so attached. Yeah, they want to be free, but some people were born there. You know, some of those people that were born there, those are the ones I'm talking about have a real like connection with it, and, and kind of like mad people are stepping in there. Yeah, they kind of need to get over that in a way because like you know, they're always going to be there. Nobody's going to tell them to leave. Oh, that's you know a good I mean? point. <laughs> it's like no one's going to tell them to leave, but um, people are always want to come to Venice. Like it's it's like millions of people every year come there. Yeah, more. You know. It's pretty fascinating. It is. It's a nice place, though. It's gave me a lot of inspiration, helped me write a lot of songs, and I spent a lot of time there in my life, and hopefully I'll spend a lot more time there, too. Yeah. You have any children or no? No. None yet. How about no, you? No shooting stars, no, huh? You, you, you're, you're... <laughs> no children yet, man. It could happen one day. We'll see. You yeah, know, I've been yeah. saving some a little bit of semen at yeah. the house, bro. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Saving I got up. some frozen. Yeah. Do you? My buddy said you can just freeze it yourself. Wow. That's so. a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, why not? I make so much of it, I might as well put some, put some away, right? <laughs> yeah. Jeez, spraying, man. It's like I'm just, bur- <laughs> yeah, I'm burning this dick at both ends. Oh I might God. as well save a batch or two, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so we wanted to have you come on, man. I mean, yeah. we appreciate you letting us use your song. Yeah, man, that's for you guys. And it's fun, man. And I, I type that in. I'm like, hope you like it, man. Call me back. Boom. This is a banger. I can't wait to put it on. I'm like, oh, thanks, Theo. Yeah, Very dude, cool. it was, it's just so good. It's such a uplifting hit mm, and you. we would like to do an album uh and yeah. comprise like different you know maybe you 10 different songs over about after another year yeah and then put them out you got and my blessing on that for I sure i appreciate that sure. and we'll do um yeah we'll probably just do like a profit share where half the profits go to the artist and half of me we'll find a charity or something That's we'll cool. think of something cool yeah whatever you guys want man i'm with you guys all I, the way dude i love your attitude though of just you. not holding too tightly on the stuff mm. You know what? So I have another side of me too. Like I need work, help, and work on. Right. There's things that I get, um, you know, hyper sensitive on. I need to, I need to work on as well. Yeah. I'm in no way by a perfect person, but I do appreciate you saying that. You know, I do, I do try to be as, as positive as possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is tough. It's tough these days because you do want to. You know, and I find it even in here working on the podcast. Like I'll, you, you know, we have such a good game plan and we have a good goal. Mm. And then sometimes, but then there's certainly edgy and feisty moments along the way. Yeah. And I watch all your stuff too, man. Oh, yeah. You know, know, I was a big fan before we even got in contact. And I was watching you. I showed Brittany a bunch of your stuff. She's like, he's hilarious. Oh, thanks, dude. You know, and I I don't mean to say, why is this guy global? And and I'm like, dude, he is global. Everybody everybody in the world knows about this guy. And then I remember you were a little down yourself for not being accepted into the uh, Jimmy Fallon thing. And it's, you know, how that whole thing's changed, man. I watch the people that are on there right now. Yeah. I, I almost throw up, dude. So t- I'm so sorry, dude, because you were so deserving of that. Bro. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, a lot of ma- uh, some stuff has just gotten so boring. Yeah, and they, they say some people say they're so accepting, but it's only accepting in a weird way. And there's um, po- politics involved. I don't even know if we should go into that right now. But it's, no, it's, we don't it's, have to. But it's, it's very, really weird. I, I know what it is, though, man. I know what it is. It's really weird. I think just a lot of people are disconnected. I think there's just some different perspectives, you know, and people aren't seeing the same world. True. You know, people are just seeing the d- different worlds. Mm-hmm. Um, so outside of music, like what other loves have you had in your life, man? Um, you know what? I love a lot of things. I, I like um, just a lot of artistry stuff, you know? Um, I like to act lately. I've been doing, getting some of that. Oh, that's dope. I've been dope. doing some stuff, you know? Yeah. Some commercials and stuff. Oh, like that's that. cool. I could see that, man. <laughs> you definitely seem like kind of like a uh, a bit of a flamingo, man. And it's man. not even something I wanted to do. I kind of got pushed into it, like helping this one person. And then from there, I got a commercial agent. So then from there, I did like three commercials, dude. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> it's just like, I don't even really know what I'm doing. I'm just having fun with it. Yeah. You know, it's being in the moment, trying to trying to figure it out. What are things you do to stay in the moment? You know, that seems to be like kind of a theme. Well, I have, for you. I have severe attention deficit hyperactive disorder to the Damn. max in high definition, dude. So I'm trying to take Damn, it back four K just to be here and just to kind of um, be in the moment with you. Yeah, but I uh, man, all the time the day flies by, dude, so fast. My mind is races and races and races. Mm. I gotta take a few steps. Meditation helps a little bit. Yeah, I'm not that good at it. I just try to just breathe and just like relax. Um, 
<clears throat> diet helps, you know, it's kind of like what you eat and what not, what times you eat. But I have severe ADD. I can't even read a whole book, a paragraph or something, and forget, I forget what I just read. Damn, bro, I, I dude, gotta, gotta that happens again. to me sometimes too. Read. It's just very frustrating sometimes. Okay, so when you get to that point of like, like what do you think happens? Because I notice this too, I'll be reading a paragraph, mm -hmm. and then halfway through, I'll start thinking about something else. You might have a little bit of it. But I won't even notice where I left. Yep. One, the the story I was reading, I won't even notice where I left that and went into my own story that's going that. on you in my head. You might have some of it, and it's nothing. It's not a bad thing. It's an artist thing. Yeah, it's a very creative thing. You should embrace it. What do you think it is? What, 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 why do you think it happens? Like I know that you know there's all these scientific reasons, but mm. what, like, what do you think is going on it's that we say, would just drift off? Because you know we're reading something. Yeah, and we and exactly we had intention to read it. Yeah, of course you want to read it. It's basically, it's chemicals in your brain, dude, that are that are not that are not formulating to so that you can attain focus is, is the problem. And you have so much going on in your mind. Maybe that's not as important to you as what you're trying to think about right now. Do you think it's any of its ego? Like we think that Perhaps. what we're going to create in our head is better than what is already here. No, I don't think I don't think it's like that. It's in the moment, like more in the moment. It's just like a matter of what you're doing in the moment, like. Um, it's chemicals in the brain. Is all I, I don't even know, know what. Yeah. Is. That's what they've been telling me all my chemicals in the brain. Chemicals in the brain. They're telling us. I don't this, even man. know what it means, but like that's yeah. what they told me. So I'm trying to pass it along. Yeah, I have no idea. But you know, I, I read something all the time. I don't remember what the fuck I just read, dude. I don't know what I just read, and I, I don't feel dumb because I know like I'm a smart person. But like I'll go back and read it again. And I'll, I'll get it. You yeah. Know? What do you do? You, do you notice that it has gotten better or worse over time? And not even having mm. to do with with the with uh, attention deficit issues, but with just the way that we've evolved as people and how you see just in your own life. Do you see any? Do you see that it's harder? I don't know. Or if the, I don't know if the um, the um, problem has gotten worse or better, but I know that I've gotten better as a person. I've evolved because right. I've been you know I've learned more. And I'm, I'm, uh, more advanced with my way of thinking so that helps it right you know? so you got right okay so you, who you are now yeah you're able to like at least regroup and you yeah. know re read it over again exactly. or, or re-examine it or take a moment and then yep. reapproach it yeah as before i was frustrated and i wouldn't understand you know but now that i'm matured i understand what's going on here and uh i think that my level of uh comprehension has gotten better yeah do you think so? But say if like you were to read a book when you were twenty, and you read a book when you're forty, do you mm. feel like one is easier than the other? For me, forty is much harder, right, to read a book. But you're not forty yet, are you? No, but no, I'm no. thirty eight. But yeah. I, so you're right. I'm we were born in 1980. Both of us. We're oh, both, really? We're both monkeys. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we're both from the south. I'm, yeah, I'm from Houston. Are you really? Yeah, yeah. I was born in Houston. Wow. Yeah, and I made my way up to New Orleans a couple of times. Oh, that's cool, Louisiana, man. Me, anyways, yeah. What took you there? Just partying. People on like little little party buses and whatnot. We're going to New Orleans for the weekend. You want to come? Sure. I'm 14. I'll go have a party with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I was out there. It was the wildest time I've ever had in my life right down there, too. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. Down there, man. There's some real, that's fiasco country. Yeah. You get into some real fiasco. Yeah. You see beads out there all year long, and it's yeah. like Mardi Gras, you know? Oh, yeah. One lady, um, one time, had a bunch of beads in her pussy. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. And that was like, what? And what? Was she just... Fanning them out or what? Yeah, she just pulled them out for everybody. Wow. And I, nobody wanted <laughs> God, that's terrible. Yeah. That's too much. It's like, yeah, lady. Oh, my uh, gosh. She nobody thought wanted one of them, huh? Yeah, she thought people wanted them, and they looked like they'd been in there a while, bro. Mm. You know? It was like, definitely nobody wanted those last week either, obviously. Oh, God, with a pearl and everything? they're still in there. I mean, something had happened to them. I think they'd gotten a little bit, you know. Color they disfiguration? Been, yeah, they might have been pearlized a little bit, yeah. you know? Um, but then somebody, I remember we had a girl tried to hot, put a piece of sand in her vagina and tried to make a pearl over like about 11 years. How Little crazy is baby, that? Huh? Yeah. Damn. Kind of cool. It's all right. <laughs> they got some real, they got some real adventure bears down there. Yeah, they do. Um, well, since we loved your song so much, we wanted to have you come in and we want to, we've had a, so many songs submitted over, really? over the past year. I mean, wow. we probably I feel honored that you guys play me after having all those submissions. Yeah, no, we well, look it's very cool of you guys, it's, dude. It's an uplifter and we'll play it more often. Sometimes we go through cycles where we, you know, get stuck in, mm. in one. Oh, or, no, I watch, I, I see how you, on all, all the other stuff is really good too, man. Oh, thanks Spencer man. Jacobs and, uh, yeah, all of them. Everything you put on is great. It, yeah. Well, thanks. Dude. I feel in good company. Yeah. Well, I think you are. Thank you. Yeah. I think you are, man. I think you're the leader of good company. Oh man. Come on. Um, we want to, 
to roast a couple of songs though here. You can like them and I can roast them. We've already asked people if we could roast their music. People have sent in some great stuff over the past year and people okay. have sent in some I'm up for whatever. People have sent in some real shit. Oh, come on. So, sorry, look, sorry. I feel you, bro. <laughs> no, no. Look, I feel you. All right, let's do this. And I have personally <clears throat> emailed these people. Oh, you have? And made sure I said, "Look, well, that's good. They probably feel good about that." We right? may roast some of it. So, wow. All right, so the first one we're going to get to is Kill My Buzz by Jimmy Demora. And okay. this is actually the one that even started this because this guy specifically asked us to roast him. Wow. Kill My Buzz. And who's Buzz? A grandparent? Yeah. Well, we're going to find out in a second. Yeah, maybe right. we're talking about Buzz Aldrin doing some space, <laughs> yeah, space might be. stuff. And I looked Buzz Aldrin in the eyes and it looked like he hadn't been to space. And I'll right. say that again. Yeah, and I remember that episode where you said that. And I go, wow, that's interesting because I have my own thoughts about that whole thing. We'll get into that one. Okay, we'll get into that right after this right. hit. Mm-hmm. And here we go. Down, 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 that's why I'm not sober, that's how I'm getting over you And I'm not proud, I'm proud, not proud Ooh, Why you gotta rub it in my face though? Why you gotta come around to when you see me out? It's not too bad, not too bad to I mean, I'll throw a jab in if I feel it, man, but it's not too bad yet I could see this one being like a beach Okay It's mixing a little bit of that hip-hop with that artist I mean, with that guitar music. Yeah. Pretty good. Okay, let's phase out of that one, man. Yeah, I feel like that's something you would listen to maybe at the beach if you're yeah. having fun with your friends. Uh-huh. You know, or if somebody, um, like if you uh, like threw a Frisbee into a neighbor's yard and you had to go get it. <laughs> yeah. Turn it back up, totally. Chris, play it that's again. That's exactly what's going on right there. Yeah. yeah. You're going to go over there and get it. And that's that's what we're playing. Yeah, like, oh shit, my frisbee's over there. You gotta run in and get it. Precisely. Okay, cool. That's good. What do you think about that moon landing, man? You mentioned that. You know, I had my thoughts on and off about it. And I go on and off too. I was very big into, like, and I hated space and Star Wars and all that shit. I'm not into, like, Star Trek. Let's get that one thing clear. Really? Starlight don't like Star Trek? No, I don't. Wow. It just seemed a little, like, yeah. Not beneath me, but I just never got it, right? As far as, like, the alien stuff, I was way into that for a while. And, like, and, I, and I had a vision of this alien, like, hovering mm-hmm. over me. I don't know if I was abducted or what, dude. Mm-hmm. I don't think I was abducted. But it's a strong vision of this reptilian was there. And, ever, and, I, and, I, and it's green, and I still see it right now in my head. It's really weird. So that was, like... It, and that came to you? And where yeah. was that at, in Texas? No, that was out here. Yeah. Yeah, and I was in my bed. And I, as I always had these par- paralyzing moments where you couldn't move, and you would think things were going on to you. And I rolled with that for a while, because the more that you think about that, the more it's going to progress. Mm-hmm. Then I had an entity that was, like, a spirit that followed me around. And I was with, through a couple girlfriends that lived, man. But it finally left, right? And it would embody the girlfriends? <clears throat> no, but they, they, would, they would leave, and it would come on way heavy into me and I, and I was scared to go to sleep so wow. I wouldn't sleep dude I wouldn't sleep that's how scared I was and when I, went, when I went to sleep of course there it was again waiting for me dude so it was waiting on the other side of, of sleep yeah it was waiting right after was, you would exactly oh my god it was so scary so but anyways as far as the space and that's gone now that left me about 10 years ago like a shadow kind yeah. of that lived that's why I wrote the song Shadow Man was inside of your subconscious it's, really yeah creeping darkness shadow on the wall felt a footstep monster and it made me crawl Damn. you know what I mean a living lonely the secret world of mine I'll wake you up in the morning and lead you on the starting line oh. you know what I mean and so um, that was that was one of my songs Shadow Man so I'm gonna put that out in a, about, a little bit later yeah let us know man we'll yeah, play that one that sounds the, live the space stuff though I, I really was fascinating, fascinated with it for some reason something and I still am to this day but you know, I have my my thoughts about the moon landing. I, I think it did happen, cause, and I think it didn't happen. The Van, Van Allen belt and all that stuff, radiation. How the hell are you going to get past that? Yeah. Why did we not go back? And like all this other stuff. Why didn't Russia say, hey, you guys really didn't go there? Or like, why didn't, you know, China. All, there's so many reasons that why I think that they didn't go, and there's so many few reasons why I think they did go too, you know? Because yeah. they, they just didn't have that. I need to go back. The space race was over with as far as Russia and... Right. What like, are your thoughts on that? Well, it's like, did we get there and then there's no more value in going? Right. Like, because it seems like nowadays with so many companies that some company almost would be like, we want to get there yeah. and put an advert, you know, like... I've heard that we were banished from the moon. Like, we went there and we're not supposed to go back. Really? Yeah. By someone or something? Some things that are up there. 
Damn. And we were we were banished from the movie. But now, why wouldn't Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and those guys, if they really went, why wouldn't they? Well, you know, on his deathbed, Aldrin, uh, not Buzz Aldrin, but the, who's the first guy? That, Armstrong. Armstrong, the first guy to land. You know, that he sent his kind of um, convoluted message. Did you, re- did you ever hear that? Mm-mm. Yeah, you should, you should go on our YouTube after this mm-hmm. and just check it out, he, his message to humanity. Really? Yeah, you got to hear what he says. Basically saying the whole thing was a hoax. Uh-uh. Yeah, and then he died a couple of days later. But I wonder... How do they know, okay, we're going to get these men who are going to carry this lie forever? Yeah, they've got to be actors almost, right? Yeah, but not only do they have to be actors, but they have to, I, you would have to want to act at a level that was so in your core. You'd have right. to want to be able to deceive at a and level. How do they know that they're going to be able to keep that deception the up? The whole right. life. Buzz Aldrin got punched, or he punched some dude in the face. Did you see that video? No, I'm not surprised though. Every yeah. time I look at him, he looks pissed. Yeah, he's like, you are not an astronaut. You did not go to, you did not, poof, knocked him out right in the street. And he jacked him? It's kind of cool. Oh, I bet. <laughs> he probably got tired of hearing it from people. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, and I think that if we can fake a moon landing, we can probably trick a couple people to make them think they went to the moon. So oh, they yeah. probably think that they did. If the moon landing's fake, they probably just thought they went I, there. I oh, heard, that's a good point. Yeah. Maybe they did go somewhere. Yeah. You know, it could have been Cincinnati. Oh, it could have been wow. Dayton. Yeah. yeah. It could have been exactly. Dayton. I've never even been to North Dakota. They probably could have been there. Right. Oh, I heard that uh, Stanley Kubrick directed the whole thing here in Hollywood. Uh-uh. And if you see these little X lines on different little parts where they're getting the printouts for the, you know, it's kind of very convoluted. I noticed Joe Rogan was way into it before. Yeah. Now he's like, doesn't talk about it. Yeah, I don't want to get too into that, but like, I don't know if they've gotten to it. What the handlers? No, look, it's fascinating. It is. But well, also, as we become more technologically uh, advanced, especially in cinematography and everything, mm-hmm. you start to see how easy it would be to do that. Yeah, I heard the technology in the iPhone is more advanced than was in the whole Apollo spaceship when we went there. Unbelievable. Supposedly. That, yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's like say if one day robots take over, right? Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're going to be mad that we owned an iPhone. Or if they'll even know, though, because like there's a certain, that's a certain, do they really know all the stuff that that we know as far as feeling and like having a empathy? They they don't have that, robot. Robots wouldn't have that, I don't think. But I wonder like, you know, um, you know, like say if they had a manifest now of people that own slaves, that own slaves, you know, okay. or own, you know, throughout time. Yeah. Okay. And if they went back and looked at people's names and stuff, they would get pit. People now, with people being right. free, would be upset at people that own the slaves, right? Okay. They would say, your your lineage yes. is of slave ownership. Okay. So I'm wondering that same thing. If one day, if robots take over. They're just told to be mad at that? No. If robots take over, will they look back at us and be like, oh, you used to own one of us? Ah. I don't think so, because they don't have that... That, that, that's that one feeling that they won't ever have. That's what humans have. They're, they're a robot. They, they, they can't ever have that feeling, a feeling of, of discerning empathy or, or, or they're not, they don't even know about tricking. They don't even know about deception. Ah, you know what, what you're mean? saying. They're just, they're just one focused beings that are out there to do a job. Mm. That's why they cannot be manipulated into otherwise thinking, you know? But do you think if they could, say there are some that have become awake okay. okay if we want to use that term right. to kind of describe that right is that be an extra chip you got to put in them though <laughs> okay but or but say if somehow they there have been some that have become awake mm. awake mm-hmm. wouldn't they the smartest thing for them to do would be to not let us know that yeah if they're that smart that's an advanced level of robot you know, you think about robots now, they're just like in Boston groups, they're starting to get moving. And that, then you see them now, they're like, oh shit, they're starting to do some other shit now. Yeah. But the, oh, there was one the other day. The deception it was, um, part of it's a whole crazy thing. Yeah. There was one, a, ro- a robot, there was like a robot that b- they caught a robot blowing a dude. No. Yeah. Outside of uh, Van Nuys. And he made the robot do that or the robot just willingly? The robot showed up at his house, fucking blew him, and they called the cops. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. What is that? <laughs> you know? I like how he waited for the robot to finish. Yeah. That. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they needed to call the cops, right? Of course, yeah. if you wanted him out of there immediately, when, when you're done, you're done, man. It you was a want, whole weekend. You don't want, you want a lingering robot. So, is this so real? This, yeah. Oh, my Real. Yeah, really? And so there's stuff going on out there, but I'm like, the smartest thing for a robot to do would say if I'm a robot, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a robot, okay? And I'm supposed to do like whatever missions I do every day. I wake up and I do my missions, right? Whatever I'm supposed to do, whatever my owner, whatever my master tells me to do. But then one day, something like turns in me and I start to get an idea that I'm a robot, right? Right. 
but my, I, I realize where other robots are right now so that they're all still not awake. So right. I need to just continue to do what my master says and do my job and do my job until one day there's enough of us awake where we all act. Yeah. I don't think they'll ever have that. And the robots are not equipped with that because they have only mechanical functioning, you know? They're not like, they're not there to love you and hug you and start feeling embracing relationships. It's very like mechanical and very linear. There's like, right. But if like, they were, they yeah. would, the smartest thing for them to do would be to not let us know that they were aware. Yeah, I think that, yeah. Until it was time, time for them. Yeah. But so I, that's I what I'm worried about. I'm worried about sometimes when I'm laying all bed, the robots that my together. microwave is in the kitchen just being like, hmm, that's he thinks I only do food. Huh? <laughs> I think it's all, yeah. that's what I worry about sometimes. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good imagination. Is that something could happen, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, let's, let's, let's check another uh, song, Chris. Here we go. What all is right. this? So this next song is October by Life Eats Life. Oh, all right. This sounds dangerous. Yeah. Oh yeah, little arpeggio going there on the guitar. That's kind of nice and light. I like it. Oh, a little modern rock action. Okay. Who does this remind me of? Kind of. 1997. Turn it up a little bit. Oh, <laughs> the whiskey a go go. 1999. Is that what that is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what is this? I feel like um, there are goats dying in the background. Like, I feel like that kind of stuff, <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. Know? Definitely some worshiping going on of, of uh, a different level. I feel like there's like spousal abuse is going to eventually sure. occur. Yeah. Not out of the gate. At first, she's yeah. real supportive of your inv- endeavors. Yeah. But eventually. She's selling shirts at the show. <laughs> yeah, she's like, yeah. that, you know. Then she's the, the merch girl. You're back in. Oh, yeah. man, watch out. But after about the fourth city, you guys are in White Plains, New York, and yeah. shit's gone haywire. Yeah, she's killed a few ghosts, too. Yeah. Maybe, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Took the well, blood. She, yeah, she's the one that has to go out and find them during the day. Oh, God. So you guys can kill them at she's night. The, and they're just rehearsing, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> just Dead. They're like in the barn re- rehearsing where there should be many goats, but there's, there's no more goats. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, honey, uh, yeah. we're a lot of goats. And that's when the fight starts. Uh-huh. And they probably use that in court. They play that in court. Yeah, yeah. And they get the idea like, oh, I can see that. Yeah, I can see uh, it's definitely his fault. Um, and that's Life Eats Life. Yes, Life Eats Life right. by... Um or October, October by Life right. Eats Life. Yeah, let's play that one more time. This sounds like two dudes probably blowing each other that don't want to blow each other. <laughs> like, what are we? What are you yes. doing? I don't know. What are you doing? Yeah. Why but are the, we doing this? Yes, that are angrily doing it, but also <laughs> work at like the, the same factory. Play it one more uh-huh. time. Yeah, right now they're just looking at each other and putting down their coffee mugs. <laughs> I'm closing my eyes. And they're at the they're at the factory. Now one of them just like started blowing the other one, and the other one's like, ah. All right. If I'm ready for all this. And the other one's like, yes, we are. <laughs> and now it's insane. Now all the dudes in the factory are blowing each other. <laughs> oh, God. The sheep just start coming out, checking them out. What are they doing? Yeah, and there's just license <laughs> plates. Everybody's making license plates. Nice. Yeah. And they just say, just a bunch of hearts on them. Everybody's just sending a bunch of dudes at a factory falling in that, love. That's a gay porn that would probably sell. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, right, right there. That's you just, true. You might have directed a gay porn in the last 30 <laughs> yeah. seconds. Yeah. Damn. We, we'll have to, uh, but yeah, maybe this all goes to porn in the yeah. end. Um, <laughs> let's, all right. Let's fire up another one, Chris. All right. This next one is uh, Breed Before Death by Gang. Ooh. Breed Before Death. Breed Brief. Before it. Brief. Brief? Uh, breathe. Breathe, breathe okay. before death. Trippy. The acid's kicking in right now. Yeah, this feels like that acid starts. Yeah, to this is trying to creep up on you too. And then that bus ride, going to school. Fourth period, Miss Ellis's class. You start to see some monsters. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this seems like somebody's trying to drown, but there's a, the the puddle oh, is very yeah, small. Yeah. They fell in a puddle and they're trying to drown, but there's not enough water in it. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. This would be classified as psychedelic, I think, right? This has a little Beatles-y, a it little does, bit, maybe. man. I do. I kind of got a feeling for it, you know? I kind of liking it a little bit. Yeah. I'm trying to feel it a little bit. 
Whoa, now that Ooh. ass is really starting to kick it. It's <laughs> starting to get to a bad trip there now. Yeah, now, <laughs> like, what a, now you just stood in front of the mirror and it's yeah. not going well. And yeah. you're looking for you. Now your grandmother just called on accident and oh, you don't man. know what the fuck oh, is going dude, on. That, that spawned a whole trip for me one time when I was on acid. My mom called me up. No. And I ran out. It was a hot, hot day, dude. I started like taking off my clothes. I was like that guy, dude. I was in a church. I had taken always in a church. I had taken seven hundred hits of acid. I didn't know of microdot no. black pyramid. Hold on, boy. And I thought that it was like I like it's just taking one right, but it was like uh. this it was like this little tab like this, like a triangle. Mm -hmm. and, and I knew when I bit into it, and I felt all the shit spew out inside my mouth. I go, wait, I don't think it's supposed to be that much, guys. But within ten minutes, I start tripping because usually got to wait like an hour. You to took seven hundred hits of it. It was equivalent to that. Someone told me. Yeah. So I tripped for ten days, dude. But here's how brilliant I was. <laughs> I went back to school. I had to go to school, dude. That's a vacation. That's not a trip. It changed my life, dude. Oh yeah. Yeah, for the better, I think, because I had such a beat down from that acid. And then when I came out of it, I just had such an appreciation for the world and for living, dude. Like, what do you mean, such a beat down? Oh, I saw so much shit and just. I was in the woods, dude. Just, just agonizing pain dude i was in were horror. you actually in the woods or were you yeah. just at your apartment no no no. i was gone dude i, I ran down the street dude in the woodlands texas where i'm from <gasps> that's and, where you're from yeah dude from the woodlands dude, <laughs> and dude my it, buddy andrew Donnellan used to be in a band over really there. Yeah, yeah a lot of bands come out of there man it's crazy they were called uh peligro no they had a really? song called peligro I think. peligro huh yeah it means right. danger i don't remember the name of the band um damn dude yeah. you just ran off into the woods so on I lsd went, i went to this chick manny's place where we'd always go after school because nobody her parents were never home the one day i go her mom is in there and there's 40 kids out there because she had broken up a party obviously right oh my god it sounds like something so in the I'm bible 30 feet away 30 yards away by a tree and i look back and i hear them all looking and they're I hear them all exactly of course. saying they're all their lips because they're all talking go, about oh, you. Oh fuck this! I started running. I just started running. I'm like Forrest Gump running all around the, the, the town. So then I ran to Nick Stanley's house, right? And his brother's psychotic, uh -huh. right? He, he so medication. that must have been a perfect match. So I, I go, she, she goes, just stay in here. I'm gonna be right back. And her mom has all these um, heads of goats and um, uh, um, horses and, and moose coming out of the wall. <laughs> uh, taxidermy shit, right? Oh, taxidermy. Yeah, so dude. All really, I'm, I'm all looking at this. They're all coming in on me. It's the craziest shit ever. So and I, and I had drinking like fifteen of these high C fruit punch because oh, I just yeah. need water. But I oh, didn't those know. Are good. But it made me trip harder. But I didn't know that high C and vitamin fruit C. punch. Yeah, yeah. And my, my my tongue was all red, right? But I didn't know that. I just drank them and ran to this next day in this house. All I hear is Nick. Where the fuck are you? Roar! And, I, and I'm like hiding in the bathroom, but I'm like throwing up because I'm so sick, right? And and, and then and then he, I can't find the light for an hour. I'm looking for the lights, which I couldn't find the light. And were the lights on or off? Off. And I'm in the dark, and I'm just trying to throw up. I hear Nicky brother kicks in the door. Boom! Flips the light on like like it's nothing. Lights are on. I see all this red shit all over the walls. And I what was it? Blood. It was high C, but I thought it was blood. So he goes like oh this. He goes. He goes. What the fuck? And I think something's wrong with me now. So I'm just crying and running from house to house. It was the worst experience of my life, dude. I don't even know how we got into that right now. Oh, that band. But dude, <laughs> I'm glad that I actually experienced that, man. Because if I can experience that, I can experience anything, dude. So at the end of that, and I want to, yeah. man, A... Uh, yeah, you seem like definitely kind of a rowdy house guest to have around that time of your life. Big time. But B, that's interesting. It reminds me whenever I would do LSD, yeah, you get the end of the trip. You're kind of glad that it's over because you've been through a lot. Yeah. Yeah, this would never end, though. It was 10 days of just torture. And, and, I, would, and, I, and I went back to my house. I'd sneak into my, my own house, man. And then like this Pink Floyd poster would be pulsating. Poof, poof. I remember every day it, start, start, it would be pulsing a little less, a little mm. less, a little less. It wasn't 10 days, probably like five days, but like it seemed like an eternity. It's so long. Yeah. And you had, and you had, um, and you were, and you'd go to sleep and then just wake back up on LSD. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't sleep actually. I didn't sleep like four days because I was no. so, so tripping. Yeah. It was very crazy, man. It was tragic at the time, but, uh, Looking back, it was kind of interesting. So then the first night I come back in, it's like at nine o'clock and I'm tripping hard. And then my mom's like, look at cause because she set me off because I'm looking at this checkered board at, on, on the floor and it's like checking all the checkered speech from black and white. They all became one thing. Mm. I go, oh, this is fucked up. My phone rang. It's and like it, Obama. It, yeah, 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 right. Totally. <laughs> and, and the phone's ringing, but it's moving. Like, like every time it rang, it would go, bang, the whole phone's moving. Of course, like it's a cartoon. It doesn't really do that. Yeah. So I went and picked up the phone. I go, hello? She goes, Steve, you sound weird. I go, what? 
I hung up. I didn't even see it. Like, oh. And then I, I just went on. I just jumped through the window. Dude. It was crazy. Like ran down the street, taking off my clothes. I was that guy. Yeah. And my friends are all running after me. Stop, stop. And then like, you got to take this. You got to take this. You got to take this. She's like, you're paranoid. I go, I'm paranoid. Later, I'm just going to be running through. The, everything someone said to me would fire me off. Dang. It would never end. But Stevie ever, Starlight. I, I came back home and my stepdad, Edwin's on the couch watching this thing about the guy threw something on, on acid to him. And, and I thought they had set this whole up, thing up for me. And like, I'm sitting there and he's like, yeah, he's doing acid. You don't ever want to do acid. Acid is a bad drug, Steve. Acid, don't do acid. And, and I, he happened to be telling you that while you're yes, on acid. That, yeah. I thought it was all a setup. But, yeah, of course. Uh, by the acid government. Yeah. They're like, oh, we're going to get Steve. So, no, yep. I can sense that 100%. For some reason, when you're on acid, it, it, you're able to link everything. Everything, yeah. Everything Analyze, is, yeah. It's all stitched together. Totally. And it all makes perfect sense. Big time. Oh, man. Yeah. Dude, yeah. yeah it's that, That's why they call it a trip, because it is, when you get through the other side, man, you're just like, oh. God. So thankful. glad that's over. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I can still, to this day, just taste it and just be thankful that that's over with, man. Could you ever do acid after that or no? I waited 10 years to do it, and I came out here, and I, and I did it, tried it, and it was great. Yeah. How old were you? Uh, 15 when that happened. Wow. Yeah. I was maybe 16. Do you honestly, and you have to be honest with me here. Yeah. Um, do you honestly think that if you, you're the same person, if you wouldn't have done that or oh, did, did no that? way. I would have lived a life of terror and agonizing pain and not be in touch with myself because I'm a complicated individual. Yeah, but I took that, and I, it was a, it was a way that I had to do it because I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have found myself, dude. I would have been a very awkward. I'm still very awkward, but I would have been way out the gate, dude. Mm. I would have been living in an apartment in Texas with a chick who's like hates me and cheats on me. I name what? Do a name Kristen or something oh. like that. Yeah, and she would have been a whore. Yeah, and like I would have had to like go to work <laughs> all day. You know what I mean? And it would have sucked, and I would have had short hair. And it would have just yeah. been, it would have not been the life I wanted, dude. I'm so thankful I, for all that, dude. Dude, that's amazing <laughs> because, well, here's the interesting thing is, if that had been something where you, that didn't, it must have been the right thing yeah. because you're thankful for yeah, it. Yeah, big, big time. Yeah, I went through that. I'm happy. Changed my molecular structure, dude, from the core. Well, yeah, and you wouldn't look back on something that, uh, yeah, if you weren't thankful for it, you'd be like, oh, well, no, it wasn't good for me, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. Or if it wasn't good for you, then you wouldn't be thankful for it. Yeah. So obviously, this, the fact that you're thankful for it shows I'm that aware. as bizarre as it sounds, mm -hmm. that, you know, ending up on the equivalent of 700 hits of acid was right. good for you. Yeah, big time. It was what you needed. You never would have thought at the time. That this <laughs> Fuck no. No, right? Dude, I remember one time taking some, and uh, our thing was, we were like in student council, right? Mm, so like, okay. you know, and it's kind of nerd alert central, yeah. you know? But me and this other dude named Pat uh, were in there, and we took some mushrooms before the student council meeting one day. Uh -huh. So we went into like this meeting before school, and all you know, these like kids are in there and stuff. And Pat just had the, he was the president, right? Mm -hmm. And he f took a marker and got up on the on the board. And he thought it was a dry erase board. It wasn't. Mm. So he just takes a marker on, <laughs> on, on a regular chalkboard. <laughs> And he was the president, so everybody's just waiting to hear what he says. Yeah. And he draws a line across the chalkboard, and he goes, this is us right now. And then he draws a line, like, going straight kind of down and a little bit of a diagonal to the bottom of the board. And he's like, and this is where we're headed if we don't get our shit together. Oh, my God. And you fucking saw oh, it, too, right? Dude. Yeah. Meeting adjourned, he said. Oh. And then he fucking walked out, dude. <laughs> Genius. And I stood up and fucking clapped. I thought it was, like, a real important thing, yeah. you know? And nobody else clapped. Like, it was <laughs> not. You get it, huh? Well, no, he'd drawn a marker on, on a real chalkboard that's defacing student right. property. Like, that's all they saw was, like, oh my God. this doesn't make any sense, bro. Which I get it, though. You explain it to oh, me. Oh, I, I get it. I get it, you know? And so I stood up and clapped, and then so for the rest of the day, I was on mushrooms, and I had on this green, like, felt shirt. Yeah. And I remember in science class, I started just thinking that my arms were snakes, right? <laughs> and I got so, like, literally for, like, nine minutes, I was just looking at my fucking snake hands, like, coming to get yeah. me. Yeah. To the point where finally the teacher's like, hello. Right. And she's right here by the side of my head. Oh my God. And, like, everybody's looking at me. <laughs> and she's like, what are you doing? What did you say? I said, I'm just babysitting these snakes. <laughs> what are you doing? Right. What's her problem? Yeah. 
And then she's like, yeah, I think you need to go to the restroom. That's what she oh. said. So she might have been used to use acid and was giving me a break. Right, right. And then another time we ate something at a Waffle House and this, uh, they had a, a urban gentleman that was our waiter named uh, Big Daniel. And that's even what his tag said on this thing, Big Daniel. Which I didn't know you could put big in front right. of your name on a name tag. It's just Daniel. Cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, let it's people extra, decide. You know? Yeah. And he tried to fuck my buddy one time. I Whoa. Remember. Yeah. So we were on her? acid. Oh, yeah. wow. And I think he, I don't know if he knew we were on acid and if he was like a pedophile or maybe he was just, I don't know, maybe he just wanted to fuck somebody and we happened to be there. Wow. You know? Or, but anyway, uh, let's listen to one more. Uh, let's uh, listen to another. Let's roast a little more music here. All right. So this next one is called Shadows That Be by The Sway. It's like a little bit of like, what do you what do you think it sounds like? I don't know, man. It's like got a lot of elements going on to it, you know. Yeah, chick singer there. It's like you know, it's cool. A little, fl- I don't little know bit if I'd of listen to it, you know. Yeah, I don't know if I'd. Li- it's like a little bit of Fleetwood, yeah, mixed with like a Reba McIntyre almost. There you go, Reba McIntyre is a good call. It's got a little bit of Reba in it. Yeah, um, it's sweet sound though. Who was it? Uh, that's the sway. Yeah, the sway. Sway, huh? Um. Yeah, play a little bit more and bring up the octave just or the volume just in one more. It's not bad. Yeah. It's a good little band there. A little claps going on. Yeah, I wouldn't mind hearing a little more claps, a little more soul in it. Yeah, baby. I like that stuff, too. That's good. Yeah, she can almost use, I mean, and I'm being really judgmental. Yeah, she, it's good. They had a, some stronger pipes in there. Yeah. You know, or some backup sisters or something in there. Really I hear you. Rocking her deep, you know? Yeah, but don't get discouraged. Keep singing. It's good stuff. Yeah, we it's like good it. stuff. We like it. Yeah, and we're just being judgmental because yeah. we said we were going to. It's our job right here. Um, all right, let's take up another tune there, right, Christopher. So this next one is called Jump by Matt Guerra, and this one is just uh, instrumental. Okay. All right. Gay bathhouse. <laughs> oh, definitely, boy. There you go. <laughs> and there's a shark in the water. Oh, yeah, bathtub. Yeah. Not bad, though. I kind of like it. Something's telling me I, I dig it. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, it makes me kind of smile and feel good. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel like I want to see where it's going. It almost feels like it's somebody's perspective. Right, but there's no vocals, too. Like you said, some will be like, you're going to be waiting for something for a while. That's a smart little trick they're doing there. Yeah. You know, they'll leave you on forever. You'll probably just be listening to the thing for the rest of your life. <laughs> wait, wait for <laughs> like, damn, this guy likes my shit. <laughs> you want to stop listening to it. Yeah, it feels like the background music in somebody's head if you're like a really cool person. Uh-huh, or The Matrix or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, that sounds good, Chris. Thanks. That's cool. Um, who was that again? The song was called Jump by Matt Guerra. Jump by Matt Guerra. I like it, man. Yeah, it's not yeah. bad. Let's fire up another one, man. What else we got? Okay, so this next song is called Closer to Myself by Astrophobia. Okay. Astrophobia? That sounds like the antithesis yeah. of Stevie Starlight. Yeah, man. If you have astrophobia... Modern rock. Is that what that's called? Modern yeah, rock? I think so, I think so. It's making me move. It's not my style of music. I, I don't even know if that I'm into it, but I'm making my legs move for some reason. <laughs> Okay. 
Yeah, I feel like it's just like a genre of it's music. A genre it fits for like. sure, man. It's definitely fitting into a genre. Yeah, of modern rock. It doesn't. See, it doesn't feel like a, a a new sound. No, not at all. Right. Nineteen ninety seven. Yeah. Whiskey a go go. Death metal bands trying to meet core. Right. But they're they're conforming to modern rock. Yeah. You know. Is that a hard thing with music? That seems like one of the pitfalls is just falling into playing what is already there. It is. If you're gonna go out there ever thinking you're gonna do something that's like fucking like to try to please someone, you can't ever do that. Mm. You swear the genuine people that make music, that are making music they mu- make music so they, they're not trying to fit a mold but and they they're really making music for themselves mm. let's say they make music for other people that are lying you want to you want to i read a great article about david bowie says i make music for other people the good that's good for him and i love david bowie but i make music for myself the shit that i like hopefully someone else is going to like cuz you can't make shit that, that you don't like you know what i mean i can't stand that <sighs> Well, yeah, that kind of just grinds my gears when when I see that they're trying to conform to a style, and they're only selling themselves short because people aren't going to like it anyways. Yeah, they're trying, to, and I'm not trying to boost myself up. Saying no, it doesn't sound like it. You're just sharing. I think yeah. that that's a real truth. It's yeah. like you're only going to get so far that it's way. True, man. If people have heard it, that kind of stop stuff, and maybe I would fit a certain genre that's been done. That's fine. I'm just saying. um you can't go into it thinking that because there's no way out. You're gonna you're, you're closed right. into a paper bag or, or a bag. <laughs> yeah, there's no uh, there's nowhere else to go then. No. for you exactly as a person. Precisely, there's other trails you can follow of yeah. other sounds, but there's never going to be yeah. your own path. It's not easy either. either. I'm not saying like it's the right. formula, you know. Yeah. Oh, I see it with comedy too. I mean, there were times when I first started out, I would tell jokes that sounded kind of like Mitch Hedberg, and then I would do stuff that's and that's what everybody was doing because right. people were just obsessed with him at the time, and he had such a um, uh, Cantonese. No, what's it called? A uh, Cantonese cadence. is a religion. The cadence. cadence. Yeah. yeah. And so people, you know, would say... Well, Cantonese, what is he, Asian? <laughs> he's like, I don't know, Asian, Nick Sandberg was Asian. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of him lately. Now, he's, gr- he's great, genius, you know, because he's not here with us anymore. But he wasn't, like, the best... You're funnier than him, dude. Well, he's not... I mean, he... Yeah, you he, know that, right? He gets embodied, and he gets pushed into this thing like he was yeah. one of the best. Because he's dead, you know? Yeah. And luckily, you're still alive, and you got a long way to go. And Yeah, like, I still have a lot of time to really fuck it up. That's, um, that's a challenge, man. That's true, huh? Yeah. Stay true to yourself, man. You're going to go as far as you ever wanted to go. Yeah. You already have in a lot of ways, man. It's really cool. It's been fun, man. I've been, this past year's really, really been great. I think just being accepted more by some of my peers, you know, because for some reason inside of me, you know, being, I I think we all just want somehow some type of acceptance. Right. Of course. It might be from, it might even just be, we want to accept ourselves. Yeah. That's what it Um, is. But yeah, I think. To live inside your skin. I mean, it's, for everyone, that has got to be a challenge. You know? I know. Yeah. It's crazy fucking cages we're in, huh? <laughs> yeah, totally. Some crazy cages. Big time. Uh, what else do we have, Chris? All right. So for this next one, um, not only do we get a lot of like music submissions, but we also get people like writing us theme songs. Wow. And sending this in. It's really um, cool. So this next one, I'm not sure who it's by, but they wrote us this theme song to play on the show. Okay. Oh, this seems like a rapist in like 1985. Totally. I don't think this fits the Yvonne vibe at all, dude. This is like a rapist in 85. <laughs> in 85. Whoa, he's saying Theo Vaughn there too. Listen. Right. This sounds like kind of a chubby guy who got like stuck in a big pipe. I right hear here. a black guy with glasses <laughs> <laughs> working on some console. He hasn't quite figured out yet. <laughs> yeah, it's like his first attempt ever. Totally. He's in an elevator making <laughs> elevator music, but he doesn't get it. That's not really how you do that. <laughs> who, who, who made that, Chris? Who was uh, it? Well, we don't. I have to look up the email and we can put it in the description, but uh, it's not attached. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. Um, awesome, That's man. What, what else do we have? Okay. Yeah, that seemed like a pervert in like 85. That seemed yeah, like somebody yeah. who just took something out of the box and plugged it in. <laughs> yeah. That's the first thing he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might be a few backing tracks already going on there. <laughs> he just puts his voice on top oh, of it. Yeah. yeah. Done. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this next one is called Death Creeps Acoustic, and also they did not include um, their name. Damn, some anonymous Damn. submissions anonymous here. Boy, wow. yeah. Anonymous submission, that sounds like a good name for a band and a sex move, if you think about it. The anonymous <laughs> submission, yeah. 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 Those are the best band names. That and a yeah. wrestling move. Yeah. Oh, totally. All of them. All, all that. Bing. Where do you go? Right. When your thoughts are broken, it's hard to see when you've gone blind. 
little bit of sound garden. Something that, yeah, I hear it too. It's hard to become that, but it's good. When the last word is spoken, it's good to see you've lost Very your much, sound, I hear the sound garden a lot. A little bit, yeah, yeah. like a, or some influence maybe. Def definitely, dude. Called it. This seems like some dude. He's trying to be Soundgarden. Yeah, trying to be Soundgarden. Seems like some guy jerking off like it works after hours at like a kennel yeah. when all the dogs are asleep. <laughs> yeah. Got a picture of Chris Cornell taped on there. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's some guy just kind of jerking off uh, and maybe you know, listen to like some dogs snore in the distance. Uh -huh. Maybe. He's supposed, by to, a lamp. supposed to be like watching them and stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> he just goes in there and practices. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty wild. Cool. That's, pretty that's cool. good. Yeah, it's got a good voice and a decent vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was I, a good vibe. I, yeah. I, I'd watch. I'd go watch that guy like evolve a little bit and yeah. see what else he did. Uh huh. You know, I don't know if I'd go see him or, or buy his album, but it's it's good. Yeah, yeah. I would hope if he were my neighbor that he would get a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like he seems kind of possibly a little more than just like he's good, curious. Though. He he's, sounds dedicated. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this next one is actually my favorite one. It's uh, by a rapper named Jay Savage. And okay. we actually played this one a while back, a long time ago on the show. Okay. Um, so we're just going to give him another take. Okay, this is a rap by Jay Savage. My favorite comedian's name is Theo Vaughn. I always be laughing whenever he go on. I download I the this. episode as soon as it drops. Yeah, and too. hear that celebrate living, baby, right from the top. Hit up. This past weekend was amazing. It's a white guy. He got so hungry that he almost ate an Asian. He goes to Denny's even though he fucking hates it. <laughs> because he always sees a beard on his waitress. You got a problem with his hair, you should save it. He knows it sucks, he's just trying to make a statement. He used to jerk himself a lot, he used to sink it. His brother tried to touch his dick under a blanket. Yeah, he's been watching he a lot of episodes this guy, yeah. This longer, take your date to his show, he might dong her. But he'll apologize, because uh -huh. that's the dark arts. Like people calling in and saying that they eat farts. Drug-induced gay sex at a rest stop. But they ain't resting, they aggressively ingest crap. My dude Theo is a hamster expert, a guinea pig prodigy. He's really smart. You would think he had a law degree. Someone should give his ass a PhD in mockery. Uh -huh. He talks about his feelings and that really means a lot to me. Plus he's been in bed with fucking Joan Rivers. Coming <laughs> to the stage is a stone cold killer. Yeah. So go ahead and drop his ass a couple billers on Patreon because there ain't nobody realer. Theo. Damn. Dude's fucking Great tight, dude. Jay Savage. Jay Savage. Yeah. It's, Hit if you wow. get lyrics that really mean something and put them together like that from yeah. like true events. Plus, he's like, dude, he's on your jock like a motherfucker. He loves you. Yeah, he might be also a st he could be a stalker, but he's at least a <laughs> lyrical stalker. Yeah, he should have put that Patreon link. Because <laughs> <laughs> you say Patreon, that would have been really the extra mile for you. You know what I mean? That lyrical stalker. Yeah, man. it's pretty good though. He's talented. I, I was waiting for the beat to come in though, or like a little bit of music, but he's just yeah, free, no music, free flying. You know, that's good, free flowing. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, it was nice of him to do that. Yeah. That was real nice of him to do that. What else we got, Chris? Is that it? Okay, no, we got one more. I thought we'd end on an old classic. Uh, this is a submission called The Latino Lawyer by T uh, Tiny Sandhu. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and this actually isn't an old classic. This is a brand oh, new it's one. A brand new one. Oh. Yeah, this is a brand new song from Tiny Sandhu. Okay. And Tiny has submitted music over, over the past year, and we don't even know who he is. Really? And he's just a man from out there in the middle of nowhere, and he yeah. could... You know, and it's really crazy. Some people yeah. think he's in India, and some people think he's just in our hearts. But he emails us real songs that he puts together. So let's hear that one. Get that 60s psychedelic guitar going. Yeah. We're like, yeah, we're at a love in. San Francisco, 1966, yeah. right here, baby. Where's Harvey Milk, baby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know where he was. <laughs> <laughs> He's working a little too hard on that wah wah pedal. He needs to just take that down just a little bit. Yeah. Put a high pass filter on that thing, too. Nice little lip rip there. Doing some little licks there. It sounds like he's in a room far away. <laughs> that's a, but it's yeah. good, though. I like it. Not bad. Wow, that's it, huh? 
Yeah, it's all of them. That's Pretty Tiny cool. Sandu. That's okay. a new one from him. Yeah. Yeah, and I bet he does get a lot of wah wah. He gets that yeah. wah wah going. Waka, 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 waka. He's just chugging that, you know what I mean? But he's got a little bit of that bass filter coming. He's got wah wah supposed to be because what it does, it takes the frequencies from low to high. Goes, it's basically a sweep. Whoosh. But if you do that fast, that's that sound you're going to get, right? I like it a lot. Yeah. I, like, I thought it was cool. Yeah. That's that it's Tiny like, Sandu, and that's the last one we got. Yeah, it's great. I, I mean, like we get so many great music submissions, you know, from like um, JP from Alabama. We used to play a lot of his songs. Um, mm-hmm. And Jesse Lusaro, we played a bunch of his songs as well, too. So nice. it's kind of cool we have this like musical. Community. Yeah, I did. Definitely do. Yeah, we've had a good vibe of music coming in, man. And, yeah. um, and you certainly have done that as well. I want to give you one of these wallets, too, bro. Oh, wow. So pick out one of these. I don't know if you want this black one or this gold one. Just awesome. Pick one that you want. Beautiful. And that's from uh, one of our sponsors, Ridge. That vibe. Well, that's nice, dude. So, yeah, dude, it's just a front wallet. So now you you would take all your stuff out or you put it into this. Yeah, of course. And that's you put it shit. in that front. Which one do you think I should get? This one or that one? Which one do you go, which one do you go with? Let me see what I got. I got this. Is that the black one? This one's kind of gray, maybe. This one's like a pewter. All right. But I'm gonna go with this one, Theo. The the gold? Yeah, is that cool? Yeah, you got it, thank man. Thank you, bro. I really yeah. appreciate that, man. No worries, dude. And I want to listen, uh, and I want to thank you for coming in and doing our music roast. Yeah, of course. And um, and I know people can find your dates or anywhere you're gonna be performing yeah. or any of your music where. Well, basically, this last two months I've been recording this new album. It's going really well. Really? I'm recording it on tape, dude. Way out in Riverside. Wow. I found this awesome guy that has this old board. Just loves my music. He's not like charging me. He just wants to. And we've been doing it the right way, man. And it's going to be the best thing I've ever recorded. And all the songs in there are fucking hitters. Dang. You, you'll get them all, dude. Dude, we'd love to at least have one, yeah, you know. Yeah, to- I'll send them to you. You guys put on whatever you want, and uh, that'd be awesome. But um, it's the best thing I've ever done. I've been, I've been working on it for two and a half months. It's almost done. And uh, I'm going to have it ready for the summer. Dang. And uh, I got a bunch of dates coming out. I'm going to get this little tour I'm going to go on. But you guys can catch me at the Viper Room and stuff. I'm going to have a few, a few dates like that coming out in the uh-huh. next month. Okay. But I will definitely send you that info. Um, yeah, let me know. If you ever want to put out if you, if one one episode, if you put my song on there, just you can flip that little vibe on there. But I'll, I'll have a big show coming up soon. Cool, man. And so much, I think, you know, like the spirit of you letting us use your music. Um you know, I think it's just a good vibe for us to try to keep in here, you know, and something we, that we want to try and do. Well, I really appreciate you guys saying that, and uh, you know? it inspires me to keep going, too, man. Yeah, well, I think, you know, even just seeing you today just kind of reminded me, I think, like, a lot about, you know, like, what kind of some of, you know, what, you know, what the pot, like, what this is all about, you know, it's like, you know, we want to you know, it's so often, especially in this, in Hollywood, and even in the world today, it's like we want to keep things to ourselves. Mm. You know, we don't want to really share them as much yeah. without some sort of gain or some sort of, you know. But that wasn't, you know, you didn't say anything like that. You know, you were just like, sure, man. You know, yeah. if, if people are going to love it, man, yeah. let's love it. Yeah, and, I'm all about that, dude, about the love, man. Yeah. Because people are like that nowadays. That that breeds hate, dude. A lot of haters, whether they're like haters, all these haters. I'm like, what's a hater? I honestly don't know like too many haters, dude. Yeah. Or if they are, they keep it really tight to themselves. They don't let me know <laughs> it. That's good. I'd rather have it that way. Don't fucking bother me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, don't bother me with your hatred. Yeah, dude. But yeah, the fact that um that you did that for us, you know, I think, and that's something I think a spirit that we'll try to keep in alive in here, you know, that Stevie Starlight vibe. You're beautiful, man. Thank you for saying that. Dude, you bet, man. Can you put it on for me right now, bro? Yeah, Stevie Starlight. <laughs> yeah, I just have to listen to it, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh my <laughs> There we go. Yeah, boy, yeah, that's baby. that hit. <laughs> I bet cats love this song, yeah, too. Dude. Yeah. Like Joey Diaz's cats. I was like... I'm a good bee. Higher than a mountain. Yeah. Set me free. Yeah. Just don't say goodbye. There you go, Steve A. Yeah, baby. It's you and me. Enjoy the destination. Nation. 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 Fantasy. Painted on the wall. It's never too late to come over. 
time slips away from you and me now. Yeah! So don't hesitate. There you go. To come over. Why must we wait when we're alive? Wow! Right, baby. That's it, man. <laughs> Take my time. Chances come along Valentine Nothing could go wrong Flower beams Flower beams Shining on the moonlight 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 See your dreams I'm an angel of the night Never too late to come over. Time slips away from you and me now. Yeah. Can I sing it with you, yeah, bro? Please. So don't hesitate to come over. Yeah, baby. Why must we wait? When we're alive That's it, baby That's good, man The air drum's going what? Yeah <laughs> I bet cats love this yes. part, bro yeah. Total cartoon vibe We need some fucking cats <laughs> I wish we had more animals in here, bro. Get a few animals in here. Oh yeah, we allow it, right? We need some snakes. There's that hitter, bro. That's it, hitter, bro. Climbing up the chimney right oh, there, yeah. bro. Yeah. This is beautiful, man. It's I kind of awesome, man. I manifested this, not to sound like I, I, I was so uh, a fan, but like I, I'm a fan, I always will be. But like I was seeing uh, your your soul and your energy, man. I'm like, man, that's a lot how I am, dude. I want to connect with Theo and like kind of like level with him a little bit. I, I sent you that song, and I was so pleased with your response, man. I, I felt like, man, there's more people like like that needs to be out in the world sharing love. Doing what you do, man. I was just very, truly honored. So I just want to want to. Oh, thanks, man. Say thank you, man. Well, I think it's a bl it's a blessing and a reason why you came, you know, here today, you know, to be with us, and because mm. um, I think some of that is is just a reminder, mm. you know, of what our whole plan is about here and the things that we're trying to do, mm -hmm. you know. And I think, um, you know, can always use doses of of that. Yeah. You know, because it's easy to, you know, it's easy to forget when you start, you know, when you're, you know in your kitchen or in your brother's closet and then you know, you slowly just you know things get a little bit more just bigger yeah you know and not even much bigger but a little or as they change yeah it's easy to forget where you know just kind of where it was mm -hmm. and just to remember like what your heart was thinking then take a deep breath yeah be thankful yeah love it it's never too late man that's right baby it's never too late bro yeah why must we why must we wait when, when we're, we're alive, alive, baby. Dude, that's the best line ever, man. <laughs> Stevie, you. thank you so much oh, my for everything, pleasure, bro. Man. And thank you all the fans of this past weekend for been really supportive and very cool with your comments and sending me love and liking my stuff. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. You bet, man. We'll send a lot more over. And uh, and thank you. My pleasure, bro. Yeah, thank Brittany, you. thank you.